In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of our recently launched new checkout layout. And you can pretty much accomplish whatever checkout layout that you see on the internet that you want for your website. So here's the layout that we recently released, and this is the new default checkout, where you have the checkout form on the left, and you have your order summary here on the right. And I took this layout and just spent a little bit of time for it. And I wanted to adapt it to create a layout that would be ideal for a single product, but also include a price selector. So if the product has multiple pricing options, include that into the layout. So let me show you the differences here, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it. And through following along in this video, you're gonna learn how to get the most out of this new checkout builder that we've created for you. So the first obvious change is I've flipped the columns. So now the checkout form is on the right and we have supporting information on the left. And with that, I also moved the order summary. You might not have noticed it. You can see I don't have it here, but if you look on the right, I've condensed the order summary and I've placed it right above the purchase button. Now the next change I did is I widened out the columns so that they can contain more information. Just for reference, see how this is a little more narrow? Uh, and this right here is a little more wide. And I also added a little bit more spacing here. I also changed the background color to this column. And as you can see, I just have a simple image, some text and a price chooser that I've added. Last but not least, I've also changed the text on the payment button here. Now it says buy now where we have it set to say purchase. So even though this might not be the exact layout that you want, just in learning how to recreate it, you'll learn how to create any checkout that you see on the internet that you want for your store. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new page for this checkout. I'm gonna go to pages, I'll click on add new, and you can name this checkout page whatever you want. You can name it the name of the product that you're selling whatever you desire. So I've named mine dog grooming. That's because I'm gonna use this same image right here of a poodle. Now the next step is to add our checkout form here. You could do that by clicking on the plus and going down to the share cart options. I usually just go here. I'll click on backslash like this and start typing checkout. And it usually pulls up pretty quick. So I'll click on checkout form and I'm gonna be creating a new form. So I'll click here where it says create new form. I'll give this a title and I'll just use the same title as this page. I'll go ahead and click on next. And it takes us to the step where we can choose a checkout form design template. And I'm gonna choose this one here that says full page. And this is the exact checkout that we have for the default checkout that we recently released. So I'm gonna choose this, I'll click on next. And for products, I'm not gonna add a product. We're gonna do this manually when we add the price selector to the checkout. I'll leave this all the way that it is and I'll click on create. Now, when you first add this checkout form to your page, you're gonna get this notice right here and it says it looks like you're using our full height columns. Did you want to change the page template to Surecart full page template? So what ends up happening is when you create a page, typically with WordPress, it has your website's header up here with the logo and the navigation and all of that. And then there's like a footer down at the bottom and there'll be different uh, constraints upon the layout, how wide it is, how tall it is and all of that. And so in order to have this design, we have created our own, what's called a page template. I know it's a little technical. And with that, it's going to eliminate the header and footer and all that kind of stuff. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna uh, publish and save this. And then let's go and, well, publish. And let's go ahead and look at what this looks like. You can see this doesn't look like how I want it to look. I've got all these things that I, I don't want. Now, if you click on this button here that says change template to full height, it'll make that notice go away. Let me click on update. 
And now let's go back and let's refresh the page. So if you notice, this looks a whole lot different. We no longer have all of those things that are coming from our website theme. And this is what we want. What that button click did was essentially when you go to your page settings, right here it says template. And when you click on it, it changed it to shortcut. Now, depending on the plugins and themes that you have on your website, you can see some different options here. That's why we created Shirtcart. And when you select that, it's going to eliminate all the things that your theme adds so that we can get that beautiful, gorgeous top to bottom split column layout. So now let's start designing this and customizing this. I always like to go into the list view by clicking on this icon and I like to expand everything out. And when I do this, it makes it really nice because I could see everything on the left and on the right, when I click into anything, I can see my block settings specific to what I've clicked on. So the first thing I wanna do actually is I want to take these two columns and reverse them. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm just gonna drag and drop it up. As you can see, I've already switched that. And as you can see, that's pretty much all you need to do to flip the columns is move things around here in the list view. So now what I want to do is I'm clicked into this column. I want to change the background color. And so when you're clicked into it, you get all of the settings for it. And so this background color is actually coming from this setting right here for all of the columns. So I'll click on that and let's change the background color. So I'll click here and then I have a color code in mind. There we go. That lightened it up. It's just F A F A F A. And that's the color that I wanted to add. So now it's all lightened up. And there's also some options right here that control this column, the columns and how they behave on mobile devices. So reverse uh, order on mobile, we don't actually need that. Uh, stack on mobile, okay, so everything here is looking how I want it. So now I'm going to click into the first column and you can see I have settings here for how wide the content area is and I wanna widen this out. It's set to 450, I'm gonna change it to 550 and when I do that, you can see it changes both at the same time. That's looking good. And then when I scroll down, I'm gonna remove the sticky option. Well, you can keep the sticky option if you want. The sticky option is if there's gonna be more content in the right column and you'd want what is ever, what's here in the left column to stick. Actually, maybe we'll just leave that on just in case. All right. And as I scroll down, I'm gonna change the padding. And that's the spacing that you can see on the top, left and right and bottom. I'm gonna increase that to, let's say 100. That might be too much actually. Let me change that to 80. Let's go to 80. Okay, now I'm gonna click on the second column and we're gonna do a lot of these same steps. So for the content, I'm gonna change that from 450 to 550 to make it wider. And when I scroll down the padding, I'm gonna make that say 80, perfect. Okay, so now I need to start adding the, col the content that I want in this first column. So I'm gonna click on the column and there's a little plus right here on the right. I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna type image. And here is the image. So I'm gonna click where it says media library and choose that same image. There it is and I wanna add a little bit of rounding on the corners. So here's all my image setting options. And right here it says radius. So I'm gonna put a value of 10 in. It might be too much, we'll see how it looks. Maybe I'll go down to five. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Now I'm gonna click back on the column. We have this plus again. I'll click on that and I'm going to add paragraph text. <laughs> Actually, I could have just started typing. So here I will type my product name. So I've entered it in and I'm gonna highlight everything and click on this B right here to make it all bold. Now also there's gonna be some options here on the right. One of them is the topography so we can make the size larger or smaller. So if you click this control here, you can put a precise number in. So if I wanted to make it uh, 18 pixels, I can do that quite easily. 
and then I can hit the enter key and I can add some supporting information about the product. And I just put learn how to groom poodles. That's fine. Next, I'll click on this plus again. And this is where I'm going to add in the price selector. So if I start typing in price like that, here it is, the price selector. Now I need to choose the price of the product, the products themselves and the prices that would be available. So I'm going to click on this plus. And this is where I can choose one of my already created products inside of SureCart. So I have a bunch in here because I use this for this setup for different tutorial videos. So let's choose a 199 plan. And I'm going to click this plus to choose a second product. And let's choose this 299. So that's going to be kind of a lifetime plan. Now this says per year. This just says membership. We should probably add some more specific information to these. So when I click into one of these, these price choices, you can see over here on the right, I can change what the label says and I can add a description and I can choose if I want this particular one checked by default. So we have lots of different options here, but let me go ahead and change the label. So I put in yearly access. I'll choose the next one and here I'll put lifetime access. Perfect. So that's a uh, looking pretty good right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this order summary down here and I'm going to make it have less information in it. But first, actually, I'm going to choose one of these options and I'm going to enable this checked by default and uh, perfect. So let's go ahead and click right here in the left for the order summary. I could click here or I could click here and I want to drag and drop it just above this submit button. So see, I'm able to drag like that and drop it right there. And so now we have the order summary right there. So let's go ahead and click on update, click on save, and let's go to the front end and see how we're doing. So I'll do a quick refresh and you can see that we have a couple things we need to fix. So far, everything's actually looking really good, but we have the content here affixed to the left and on the right, we have it affixed to the right. And it's very easy to make an adjustment to this and we'll do that. It's also optional if you want the logo here or if you want to remove it, it's completely up to you. And then we'll go ahead and clean up this order summary. Let me show you how the order summary looks uh, right now. Uh, you can see there's a scroll here and there's lots of information. So we're going to make that condensed. So let's go back and make our adjustments. So what I just did is I refreshed the page. And I did that so our order summary would populate for the choice that we had selected. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand back out our options here and our columns. So remember we had that problem where the content was affixed to the left. Well, when I click on the column, there's this option here that says justification. And I'm gonna choose this option here to justify items to the right. The reason we're having it look like this is because we reversed the columns. And so it's important to change the justification. So I'm going to click on the second column and it's set to be justified to the right. I want the left. Let's do a quick update and refresh so that you can see that that indeed solved that problem that we were having. Now let's make those improvements to the order summary. So let's expand this out and here where it says totals, that's our order summary right here. And we can expand it and it's styled. There's dividers and, and different components to it that you may or may not want. So for example, I don't want this divider here. So I can click the three dots and I can remove it. Next, we have the line items right here. In my thinking, it's already assumed what someone has chosen. This isn't a, a checkout where there could be lots of different products. It's only this product or this product. So someone's going to know what product that they've clicked on. So I don't actually want the line item breakdown. So I'm going to remove that. I'm also going to remove this divider like that. Now you do want 
your subtotal. You do want the tax line items. If you're charging tax, it's going to show that on a separate line and you do want the total, obviously. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to delete this divider. So now it's very condensed and we can choose what we want to do with the coupon. So maybe I'm going to move the coupon here to the top just like that. So let's go ahead and do an update and check how this looks on the front. And you can see it's looking a lot more condensed right here, which is what we wanted. Although I don't need this to say order summary and I don't need this collapsible part. What happens is if we remove the collapsible part, it's going to remove this order summary line as well. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment. So I'm going to click right here where it says totals. There's an option here to make it collapsible and I'm going to turn that off and I'll turn the collapse on mobile because it's uh, redundant. I'll click on update and now let's see how that's looking. And you can see it's very much condensed now. I only see a couple more changes uh, to make. I need to maybe make this image wider and I'm probably going to remove this logo and that would probably get us to completely match the layout I showed you earlier. All right, so I know that this column is 550 pixels wide. And the reason I know that is I can click on the column and I can see it right here, 550. But when I click on my image, it's gonna tell me the dimensions of the image and it's not 550 wide. So what I can do here is stretch it a little by making it 550. Now, I don't know why the editor when I do that, it kind of pops it out of the frame that it was in, but it's not going to look odd on the front end. So I'll go ahead and put 550 like that. Let's do a quick update and do a refresh on the front end. And you can see now it's looking perfectly to the width there. And lastly, let's go ahead and remove the store logo. I'm going to click on it. Let's click the dots and remove the store logo. And I think that pretty much just got us there. And it looks fantastic. Now let's see how close I came. It looks like the design I showed you in the beginning had a little bit more padding in, but you can easily adjust that by going into the column. Oops, there's one thing I didn't do is I didn't change the text on the button. Let's go do that and then we can call this a wrap. So I'm going to click right here where it says submit button and you can see over to the right here, we have the options for changing the text. So let's change that. There it is. I've changed it to buy now and you can see that you can take the totals out if you didn't want it. You can take the lock out if you didn't want it. All these options are here for you as well. And that is all there is to creating a fully custom layout like this that just looks fantastic. Now, I know that took a few minutes. That was simply because I was trying to explain every change that I made to it to get that result. And once you're comfortable with these settings, you'll be able to crank out beautiful designs that look exactly how you want them to look very easily. And you can reuse those designs over and over again for the various products that you sell on your website. Now, this video is a wrap. I will tell you that we're going to be adding some checkout templates similar to what I just showed you. We want to have a few in there so you don't have to manually do what I just showed you in the video, even though it's good to know that for learning purposes, but we're going to add some checkouts like this that you can just click and you're good to go with maybe a few minor tweaks to make it look exactly how you want it to look to match your brand. I do want to ask right now if you can click on the thumbs up button for this video. And if you want to find out all the latest features that we're releasing to ShareCart, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join our Facebook group, which a link will be in the video description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.